trinomials and, and, and different situations that we'll see in factoring. Just as a quick warm-up, let's revisit some of the expanding that we've been doing. So earlier we've done FOIL to expand a pair of binomials like x minus 3 and x minus 3. One of the patterns we noticed is that the middle two terms cancelled out and we were left with an x squared and a minus 9 term. And it's interesting to note that these are both square terms. You can take an even square root of x squared, it becomes x, and you can take an even square root of 9, it becomes 3. This is called a difference of squares, the result. And what makes it, again, is called a conjugate parent. Another type that we looked at was expanding a binomial that was squared by itself, or a perfect square. And to do that, what we had to do was rewrite the binomial one next to each other. And then during the expansion by FOIL, we noticed the middle two terms were always the same. And so we developed the shortcut of taking the first term and squaring it, multiplying the two terms inside the brackets, and doubling them to get to the middle term, and then squaring the last term for the last term of the trinomial. The last type is another example of a perfect square trinomial. We've got 3x minus 5 and 3x plus 5. And what results is again that same pattern where we have the two middle terms cancelling out and a difference of squares as the result. Well, for factoring a difference of squares. Again, we've seen that pattern for expanding conjugate binomials. Well, this pattern will allow us to factor a difference of squares quite simply by working backwards. Consider the example above. When we expanded these two binomials, we got to this difference of squares. Now, since factoring is simply the reverse process to expanding, we now seek to go from right to left above. So from the difference of squares to the conjugate binomial. So let's see that in the example that I have listed here below. So we've got x squared minus 1. Oh, sorry about the little lag there, folks. And what we'll see is we'll have a conjugate pair. We take the square root of the first, x. We take the square root of the second, 1. We use one with the subtraction sign for the conjugate and the other for the multiplication sign. And then we're finished. Let's review a few examples. Factor the following expressions. Well, I've got 4x squared minus 9. Well, 4x squared, the perfect square of that is 2x. Minus 9 is 3. And so we have an answer. We take our first term and place it in the first spot, our last term in the last spot of our binomials, and we just change the signs, plus and minus. For the next example, we've got 3x squared minus 2. Well, we would end up with the square root of 3, but the square root of 3 is not a perfect square, so it does not turn to be a difference of squares. There's also no nice and even square of 2. So both of these terms would have this thing turned down and we would say that it does not factor. For the next example, 16 is a perfect square. Its root is 4. 25x squared is also a perfect square. Its root is 5x. And Again, we build our conjugate pair. The first term in the first spot, the second term in the second spot, add and subtract, and we're there. Now, the second last example, 64x squared plus 81. This is where the name difference of squares should kick off. This is not a difference. In fact, this is a sum of squares. We can't factor a sum of squares. So since it is not a difference of squares, we say that it doesn't factor. And for the last example, we have y squared minus x to the power of 4. The square of y, or the, the square root of y squared, is y. And the square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. Again, we build our conjugate pair. 
the first term going in the first spot, the second term going in the second spots, and alternating the signs. Notice it doesn't matter the order. Negative can come first or negative can come second, as in this example above. So those are our difference of squares examples. The next type that we've seen is a perfect square trinomial. Recall we've seen a pattern for expanding squared binomials, and we did look over one of those in the warm-up. If we expanded 2x plus 1 squared, we would have 2x plus 1 squared turning into 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Remember the pattern was we squared the first term, multiplied the product of the two terms by 2, and then squared the last term. Again, since factoring is the reverse process, we want to go from a trinomial that has perfect squares in the front and the back and satisfies that pattern with the middle term going from right to left. Let's look at some examples of that. So example, factor the following expressions. Well, let's take a look at the first one. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. There is a square root of 4x squared, it's 2x. There is also a square root of 9, it's 3. When we multiply the two of them together, we get 6x. Since this is exactly half of the middle term, we know that this is a perfect square trinomial. And we say that 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 factors as 2x plus 3 squared. Let's take a look at the second example. 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. Right away the negative sign in the end should kick it off. We can't possibly have a perfect square trinomial if there's a negative sign in the second spot. Also, since the square root of 3 is not a perfect square, this doesn't work out. So we know that we don't have a perfect square trinomial, and we may have to look for another way to factor it. The following example shows that we can deal with a negative in the second sign. Just so long as, sorry, the first sign. Just so long as the second one isn't a negative as well. There is a perfect square of 25x squared. It's 5x. And there is also one of 49. It's 7. Combining the two of them leaves us with 35x, which is exactly half of 70x. Now, where does this negative sign fit in? When we put together our binomial, 5x and 7, the sign takes whatever that first sign is. So our resulting binomial is 5x squared minus, sorry, 5x minus 7 all squared. That minus sign is there because that minus sign is there. The last example I'd like to show you is to convince you that you need to 